Okay, good morning. Can you hear me? Can you see the slide? Okay, Bully, Bully Deborah. Anyone? Hello, hello. Bully, sir. Okay, Bully, Bully, in a past slide, eh? Bully, sir, Bully, sir. Bully, sir. So, so I think uh, kita dah tunggu few minutes. Okay, so still ada some of your friends still entering. Morning, uh, good morning. Okay, so I think kita boleh start lah. Okay, the uh, chapter six. Okay, so we have completed on the fully pneumatic side. So we are entering one chapter on electromagnetics. Kita hanya akan belajar for this week lah. Yes, yes, good morning. Okay, so kita akan masuk chapter 6. Okay, so introduction to electronomatic. So this will be just an introduction chapter. Uh, so only one chapter on electronomatic uh, before we enter to hydraulics. Okay, so uh, electro-pneumatics, I think you are quite familiar already because kita ada buat lab. Okay, so lab 2 on electro-pneumatic. So you already know how it functions. Okay, so the inter interaction between electrical part and also pneumatic part. So even though only one chapter discuss on electro-pneumatic, soalan boleh keluar. Soalan boleh keluar dari electro-pneumatic. Okay, like... Uh, some of the question, maybe kita bagi animated, ask you to draw the electrical circuit. Okay, or uh, given electrical circuit, uh, ask you to draw the pneumatic part. Ataupun buat dua-dua sekali. Okay, so I can be asked. Okay, so that's why I consider this chapter as an important chapter for you to understand. Okay, so uh, we will start. Okay, so electronomatic, so the definition will be, so electronomatic term is defined from the word of electro, which means electrical, and pneumatic, which means pressurized air. Okay, so I think from the name, you you already know, the electronomatic consists of electrical and also pneumatic part. So electro-pneumatic equipment and system is an integration of electrical and mechanical component with compressor. So, okay, so they are the combination of dual dual. Okay, so electro-pneumatic is a control system where air pressure and direction of valve are controlled by an electrical current. Okay, so most most of the part, so electrical part control the pneumatic. Okay, so only the alarm limit switch, uh, so or ruler, so it is connected back to electrical. Akalata electrical can control pneumatic. Okay, so that's on the definition of electronic. The other definition of electronic, so pneumatic is a method of to transfer energy from one point to another using actuator which are driven by fluid under pressure I any different, different the pneumatic so pneumatic restrict itself to gaseous fluid uh, while hydraulic use uses liquids to transfer the energy uh, so for visa and keep between pneumatic and hydraulic so pneumatic uses gaseous fluid uh, put compressed air while hydraulic uses a liquid so, okay, so pressure of the pneumatic system can be controlled by manually opening a valve, okay, automatically by detecting its pressure or sending an electrical signal. Uh, so, biasanya kita akan gunakan manual method to open a valve uh, using push button or foot pedal or, or other ways lah, okay, uh, and lever, okay, or you can use a automatic. Uh, automatically detecting using a roller or limit switch okay and as well 
you also can use a electrical signal to control the pneumatic so ada ada banyak cara lah so okay, today we will see on the electrical part how you can use electrical to control uh, we are, you are quite familiar with the first two okay manually opening a valve and also uh, using a roller yeah, or other other detecting uh, ways okay uh, we electrical kita tak tengok sangat okay, so today we will see few things okay. It, the control of pneumatic components by electrical impulses, electrical signal is as control pneumatic. So you are controlling pneumatic using an electrical impulse. Impulse, maksudnya electrical signal. So it's known as electrical Okay, so you can see a signal flow and components of an electric of pneumatic control system. So if pneumatic Okay, you will start with uh, input, signal input. Uh, so, normally we can start push button. Okay, push button, then you have uh, all involved for signal processing. The signal output from the direction control valve. And then the execution is using a cylinder or motor. Okay, so we are, you, this is the flow. This is the flow for pneumatic system, but in electro pneumatic, in electro pneumatic, yang bagian belakang tu betul, uh, still the same, uh, but yeah, initially, so the input can be from a push button, control switch, limit switch, read switch, uh, inductive proximity sensor, positive proximity sensor. So light barriers, uh, pressure actuators, uh, switches. Lalunya symbol di macam ni lah. So you, uh, that you will use in the ladder diagram. Okay, so kita akan gunakan bagi si, si, uh, input ni dekat ladder diagram. Okay, and signal processing pun so normally will be in the ladder diagram. Like relays, uh, relays or kita panggil as coils. Okay, so contactors. Yeah, normally open, normally close. Yeah, other contactors and PLCs. Yeah, PLCs uh, other other components. Yeah, this part normally will be in the electrical ladder diagram. Uh, then for the pneumatic, so linkage between electrical and also uh, pneumatic will be at the directional control valve. So biasanya kita akan letakkan solenoid. So solenoid is the linkage between electrical and also pneumatic. Okay, so based on the trigger, uh, they can tukar state of the directional control valve. Okay, so so I to detail the case ni. The electro pneumatically operated directional control valve because it will be activated using a solenoid. So it will give a signal output and then the execution still summer. So you are using a, a cylinder ataupun motor. Okay, so a bit a slightly different for electro-pneumatic compared dengan pneumatic. Okay, so pneumatic power section. And so power section is the last part lah. Okay, so normally uh, we will use a cylinder. Bevel cylinder. Okay, so it's thing to related dengan circulation. Uh, then you have uh, pneumatic motors on the and, and other stuff. Okay, uh, so kalau tengok memang is controlled by electro pneumatically operated direction control valve. Okay, so what is electro pneumatically operated direction control valve? Uh, so it's actually solenoid actuated. So the directional control valve is controlled by solenoid. So it forms the interface between signal control section electrical and the pneumatic power section in the electro pneumatic system. As I say, the solenoid will be uh, the connection 
between electrical. Uh, so you can set uh, the connection between ladder diagram and also pneumatic part uh, with that solenoid. Okay, so I need your pachala that is yang flow. Uh, so this is the front part. Okay, so you can see normally it will be given using an uh, electrical uh, input and also processing elements. So I took the ladder diagram, you can see uh, the electrical push button, uh, limit switches, coil. Uh, then uh, solenoid. So all that will be in this part. Okay, so some of the advantage of using electronumatic. So maybe you will be asking why electronumatic, why not other stuff? Okay, so it has some advantages. Okay, so advantages will be lesser wear of part, so lesser is installation job, because I think uh, we are more towards electrical. Uh, because electrical power is available sampai ke rumah okay until the house we have electrical supply okay so you you can use the electrical so biasanya kita just uh, connect uh, to the electrical supply terus boleh dapat electrical supply you don't need to generate so you tak perlu pergi ke kempangan generate sendiri your electrical no is already uh, generated and available at our disposal. Okay, so you can utilize this. And one of the advantage of using electro-pneumatic is lesser wear of pipe. So bagian, uh, if you use a fully pneumatic system, so maybe because of the friction, uh, we can have uh, wear and tear. Okay, maybe a, a component too, after some time, so you need replacement and because you did a detail by the cylinder open and close uh, so maybe there will be a friction and well okay or the process inside we always have uh, a lot of uh and valve uh, is still the same it will have a movement inside the valve. Uh, so you can have uh, maybe spring gear or saga. Uh, so you can have a lot of stuff. Okay, but, uh, that's the first thing. The okay, lesser installation job, especially in the electrical control valve, electrical switches. Uh, so it's already available, Machani, panel. Okay, so the last two panel already have four switches. Four switches are available. So you don't need to go and find one by one okay, for you to control. Okay. So there's uh, one, one thing left. So you have a very systematic, so more systematic system. Okay. The second advantage will be replace tube in pneumatic system to electrical wire in electro pneumatic. So tube. Okay, so tube, one thing is environmental environmental friendly when you use electrical wire yes because uh, it's not using a plastic okay and uh, so tube can be expensive nylon tube okay the pneumatic system you use a nylon tube uh, so it will it can be expensive compared to electrical wire yeah so electrical wire so it's already available in in bulk Okay, so already available in the market. So you can purchase this uh, easier at a lesser cost. Okay. The third advantage is less part are used, uh, reduce working space. Uh, so this is uh, one one thing that will be considered in industry. Uh, so you turn a lot of space. Okay, so smaller space, so you can utilize you can get the same output like you're using a fully new method. Okay, if a if a pneumatic alone, so you will need a, a larger space, quite an electro pneumatic. 
Okay, and number four, sensor and controllers such as PLC can be included in the system. Okay, so expandability of the system. So you could kita can electrical sensors. The electrical sensors are available. They are available so it can give a input for you to control the ladder diagram and also pneumatic. And you can use the controllers like PLC. So we are gonna can let so maybe uh, since you are using uh, simulator, you can pasang it. But uh, if you, you can get the experience of using a electronic system, physical one. Okay, so the lab other that we get that because uh, online gun. Okay, so you can expand the system using a uh, controllers like PLC. Okay, so or you can you even use a, a more advanced way of controlling, uh, not not PLC lah. So maybe touch screen or uh, other stuffs lah. Other stuff maybe computer. Example, you will use a cloud system. Okay, now uh, is a quite famous thing. So in industrial revolution 4.0. So uh, you want to use. So you send signal from your mobile phone to the cloud. Cloud I can see anti signal the controller to start and stop your pneumatic system, electro pneumatic system. So believe you it's possible. Okay, so I think that some of the industries they have that. Okay, which will be uh, quite easy lah, uh, because the technician no need to be in the location unless emergency lah. If not. Uh, from the house, the technician can operate. Will they check? So that that uh, uh, that some of the advantages of using electronic system. Okay, so basic electrical devices. Okay. Seven basic electrical devices commonly used in the control of the power system. So you can see the manually actuated push button switches. Okay. I think I need to put up dulu. Okay. So you, uh, what are the inputs that we can give? If not mistaken, chapter two. Okay, chapter two. So you can give a manually input. Like uh, you are using your own end to press the push button, or you can use foot pedal, or you can use end lever. So that is what we call as a manually actuated. The mechanical position sensors like roller switch. Okay, so roller switch yang you gunakan untuk distance rule. You can use. Okay, but in uh, in fully pneumatic system, you use a roller. Uh, in electrical limit switch, uh, electric electro pneumatic, we use limit switch. This about to the lab module. You tanya, never so I cannot find this because that is a, a limit switch. So the other dalam dalam tu, it may be a different name lah. Okay, then you have a pressure switch. Yes, okay, give a pressure input. Uh, then the last two part that we will study today. Solenoids and also relays, okay, which are related to electronic. Then we have other other systems as well, like timers. So, any slowly we can use time delay, okay. Or uh, in electrical, you can use electrical timers, okay, and temperature switches. Okay, so normally these are the uh, basic electrical devices. Used to control the uh, power. Okay, so other devices used used in electronics are okay. So proximity sensors are like your IR sensors or other mechanism like so anything that can activate detection. So proximity, what is proximity? You are also using my proximity. Uh, proximity is like distance 
like a certain distance, approximate yeah. distance. Yes, a sensor with a that detects a certain distance. Yes, sorry. Okay. Okay. So proximity means nearby. Okay. So when something is nearby, so it will start to detect. Uh, so that is what we call as a proximity sensor. So remember the perception line. Uh, you will see this often. Okay, there are thousands of proximity sensors available. Then in the production line, things will be going in a conveyor, a conveyor belt. So at the barang, so going from station to station. Uh, so when upon detection, uh, so your conveyor belt can stop. Okay, for the operator to take and do something, and then put back, and then go to the next station. So proximity sensors are very useful. Okay, so the lab mechatronics, uh, we normally use uh, IR sensors, um, or uh, we can use IR sensors are uh, infrared. Uh, so we, we also have uh, other mechanisms as well. Okay. So similar thing can be used in the uh, electron pneumatic. Then you have a read switch, okay, switching. So upon uh, receiving uh, pressure or electrical connect, uh, electrical input, uh, it, it is connected. Okay, so read switch and then electrical counters. Counters much like timer juga lah. Okay, so but counters are not based on time, but counters are more related to numbers. Okay, so 10, 9, 8, 6, 7, uh, Yeah, after some time, it will start. Okay, so far so good, other solan, before we enter, enter to our other, other stuff. Any any question? Fully farm? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, we will continue. Okay, we will see few uh, few inputs, inputs or uh, elements used in the electricity. Okay, first thing. Um, maybe indirectly you the thing on lah, benda benda ni. Okay, during your lab, so the size is uh, quite good uh, because you already exposed. You already learn uh, from internet, so learn from your lab module. Okay, how to use it. Uh, tapi maybe you don't know what the symbol actually about. So kita akan belajar lah sikit. Okay. Okay, so first A. A is push button. Is push button switch. Okay, so push button in electronic available in two types. Okay, so consists of two types. The first type is a momentary push button. A mo momentary meaning that during that moment, lah, okay, uh, the, you push, and uh, there was a spring in the Okay, so you push, as long as you hold, uh, it will be actuated. Uh, you look past there, you ambi your tangan. Uh, it will return back to unactuated position uh, upon release. Okay, so that is what we call as a momentary push button. Okay, so the second one is maintain contact. Contact or detain push button. Okay, upper to detain. Upper to detain. Yeah, that time the time. Yeah, too much. Um, too much. Um, permanent. Permanent. Okay. Okay. Any other answer? Uh, I think it prevents. Uh, something. Uh, prevents motion until it's released. So detain detain is uh, like uh, levels. Uh, so you tekan, uh, they lock the one level. You tekan lagi, the second level. Uh, so there are a few levels of uh, switch. Nothing on the switch, macam tu. 
Dia tekan dia lock dekat one point. Tekan lagi dia lock dekat another point. Ha, tekan lama-lama baru dia ready macam tu. So dia macam ada lock lah. Okay, so detend detend uh, switch uh, meaning you have levels in the switching. Okay, so uh, dia tulis dekat sini lah as a latching mechanism to hold it in, in the selected position. So normally detend push button you akan ada a uh, few levels uh, two or uh, two or three levels lah. Uh, dia ada locking mechanism at that point. So that is the second type of push button, a maintain contact, meaning uh, you tekan then release pun, you still ada contact. Okay, that is what we call as a maintain contact. Okay, so you can see here momentary type. Uh, so normally uh, for electrodematic, it will come in a set. Macam uh, macam tadi lah, macam ni. So you tengok, so dia ada empat switch. One, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. Ah, dia akan ada macam-macam ni lah. So, it's like a panel. Okay, so, uh, that's why you have um, 13, 23, 31, 41. So, this is actually uh, the push button number. Okay, or the connection number. Okay, so boleh tengok dekat sini. Uh, 13 connected dengan 14. So, 13 connected dengan 14. So, this is one switch. Okay, so this is second switch. Uh, so you have uh, normally uh, the push button station PB. PB is push button. Push button station S to normally open and to normally close. Okay. So the electrical uh, normally open upper maksud dia. Normally close upper maksud dia. So normally open ada connection ke tak? In electrical. Normally open, yeah, yeah. Yeah, open. 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 Yeah, then you tekan, dia akan open. Okay, so that is what we, in the electrical. But in pneumatic, uh, so pneumatic normally open meaning, so normally on. So normally, dia ada contact. Uh, the pneumatic, dia terbalik. Okay, so that, that's on the momentary contact type. Okay, then... This is maintain contact. Yeah, di tengok tengok dia ada level. Uh, so you tekan je dia akan lock uh, until you release. Okay, so yang ni pun dia ada uh, two normally open and two normally close. Okay. The contact of the push button distinguish according to their function. Uh, so dia ada satu lagi change over. Okay, so change over is a combination. Macam kita tengok tadi, dia ada dua-dua. So normally open and normally close. Okay, so normally you can um, get a single switch or like the switch panel tadi. Okay, so boleh baca dekat sini. Normally open, contacts are open in the normal position in everything, the energy flow through them. So normally open, Dia tak ada connection, normally close, uh, permitting energy flow. Okay, so in electrical lah. Okay, a change over contact is a combination of normally open and normally close contact. Ini adalah, you can change, it depends on what you want. Okay, so you can see the mechanism. Okay, so this is the symbol. Symbol yang you biasa tengok dalam ladder diagram. Okay, so it depends also uh, dalam simulator maybe symbol yang ada dalam lecture note is not really same like in your fluid frame. Uh, sebab fluid frame, dia 
from Festo. Yes, so Festo, if you're not mistaken, is from US. So, so you can allow you, uh, US, maybe it's in both So maybe uh, the symbol will will be a bit different. Uh, so Festo is USA. Okay, so Festo is USA. Uh, so it depends on the country. Uh, some countries they prefer to have the uh, a bit change symbol. Uh, so it's a, it's a based on the networking lah. So if more uh, companies are using US based uh, product, they can guna can symbol design because uh, they will consider it's widely accepted. Okay, so you can see uh, all the symbols. Okay, so this is uh, normally open, let by push button. So normally close push button. Okay, and change, change over, you boleh tukar. Uh, so you have the two numbers. And because in here, and there's one number. Okay, so you can see the mechanism normally open. Uh, so this is your normal position. Okay, by the contact. Kalau you tekan tu, dia akan turun ke bawah. Then when you release, it will go back because of the spring. So normally close, so it will be connected uh, normally. One side is connected, one more side is not connected. Uh, you tekan, dia yang atas ni disconnect, yang bawah ni connect. Okay, so it depends on your push button. Okay, so uh, in pneumatic circuit, So, yeah, this is normally open. Yeah? Okay, if, if pneumatic, uh, normally closed, maksudnya, always ada. Okay. Close, normally closed. Okay, so I think ada sedikit issue with me. Yeah, I changed last time. So you will Uba Juga. So if you see here uh, in pneumatic circuit, so normally open means so it's always connected. Okay, normally close means uh, disconnected. Okay, so in pneumatic, but in electrical, so normally open means no connection. So no uh, data balik. Electrical normally open means it is disconnected. So, jangan tanya kenapa dia macam tu. So, uh, we just accept lah apa yang uh, digunakan. Okay. A okay, push button. Faham? So like that. Yeah. Uh, 
So there was a mention of the uh what was the, the change to right? Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, mention of the change of the switch, right? Hello, Bully Is okay, it my uh, connection or your, your connection? Uh, I think it's my connection. Can you hear me now? Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, I can hear. All right then. So earlier uh, you, you mentioned the change of the switch, right? Yeah. How Did you... does the change of the switch work? Oh, okay. So you can see here in this slide. Can you see the slide? Yes. Okay, yes, yes. so uh, so you you see this is a normal position meaning unactuated so in unactuated the top part is connected and the down part is disconnected so meaning this is normally open or normally closed at the on top it's normally closed but at the bottom is normally open yes uh, top is normally closed bottom is normally open but when you press the button it will be switch switch over uh, there, there will be change over uh, when you press this button uh, the top part will be disconnected and the down part will be connected when uh, because you are pushing you are applying force okay so it will change over uh, upon uh, push button uh, push button act uh, as actuated or it will be uh, opposite so initially it will be disconnected uh, and the down part is connected. Uh, then you you have another mechanism to disconnect it. Can be also. Well, okay, sir. So it it will have uh, both uh, normally uh, because sometimes uh, some of the circuit we want to use normally closed, some normally open. So it, it will be connected to both. Uh, so open position, it will switch. Uh, but it, it depends on our creativity, how you want to design. Uh, so that's why uh, designing uh, correctly is important. Uh, so you maximize all your uh, elements. Okay, elements like push button, switch, release. Uh, so in order to get the perfect uh, circuit. If not, you will have uh, energy waste. Uh, so that's what we call as uh, optimization. So uh, you want to optimize the energy use. Okay. Any other question? So you don't have. We'll move to B. Yeah, so earlier we saw the manual, manual. Or we call it a uh, limit switch. The limit switch, maksudnya, a switch that can detect the limits. Uh, so limit, uh, so that's why we use for and the distance rule. So distance rule point, uh, the mechanism which are limit switch. Okay, so
So can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, can you hear? Can sir. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, yes, sir. Yes. yes sir. Okay, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think got some connection problem here. Yeah. It's suddenly disconnected. Okay, can you see the slide again? Yes. Sir. yes sir. Okay. Okay, so the, the sound is clear? Yes, sir. Okay. It's okay. I think uh, we will take five minutes break. Uh, then we will continue with uh, B. So we have a few more slides to complete. So we will start again at uh, 8.55.
to four minutes. Okay, so we will continue. Yeah, you back? Yes, sir. Okay. So I think uh, previously I have explained, so I don't know until when you managed to listen earlier before the network problem. Um, so, did I cover the whole slide? Anyone? I think it's the only one's left here. 
Okay, never mind. I just uh, explain slightly. Okay, so uh, in pneumatic, um, okay, so in pneumatic, if you have a roller switch, okay, similar like this. So we are, we, we are familiar with this, okay, in the normal uh, design, pneumatic design. So we call it as a roller switch or we call it as a limit switch also. When in flip sim, we call it as a distance rule. Okay, and in electro pneumatic, we have, we have a mechanical position sensor. Okay, so something like this. Okay, so I think some of your friends also ask, right? Okay, what, what symbol is this? Okay, so it's actually electro pneumatic limit switch. Okay, or well, we call it as a mechanical position sensor. Okay, so both uh, the function are the same. Okay, to detect the end of uh, any movement. Okay, so this is on the mechanical side. So this will be electrical side. Okay, so in physical uh, mechanical position sensor in electro pneumatic will look like this. Okay, will look like this. Okay, so you do have uh, extension uh, and it will be activated. Once it's activated, uh, you will have an uh, electrical connection coming up. Okay, coming out uh, to your ladder diagram. Okay, so in your uh, design, so electron pneumatic, you will have two designs. Okay, the first part is your uh, pneumatic side. Okay, and pneumatic side, and uh, the second side is your electrical side. Okay, so for your uh, pneumatic side, you need to use this symbol. And for electrical side, you need to use this symbol. Okay, yeah, so you cannot uh, interchange. You cannot, for electrical, use this symbol. And for your pneumatic, you use this symbol. Uh, it will not work. Okay, so you need to use the proper symbol in your design. Okay, so this one, the uh, mechanical position sensor. Uh, Okay, and uh, this this is the type uh, which has a uh, boot changeover. Okay, so you have boot. Okay, but upon actuation, so it will change state. Any switch that is actuated due to position of the fuel power component, usually a piston rod or hydraulic motor shaft or the position load is termed as limit switch. Uh, so limit switch so any uh, other uh, definition there okay so you can understand from here okay so we are entering to see pressure switches sensor okay so pressure switch is a pneumatic electrical signal converter uh, so any other uh, actually a uh, signal converter so meaning you receive a certain pressure, it will change to electrical signal. Okay, so that is what, a, uh, what is called as converter. It is used to sense a change in pressure and opens or closes an electrical switch when a predetermined pressure is reached. Okay, meaning you already can set a limit. So when you apply a particular pressure, uh, so it will be uh, it will open or close the electrical switch. Uh, so, we yeah, need a like, sensor, a okay, pressure sensor. Okay, uh, so, you need to uh, reach the particular uh, predetermined. Uh, so, katakan can bar. So, you bagi pressure supply bar, uh, it will on or uh, open or close the electrical switch. Okay, so, that is what we call as a pressure switch sensor. Okay, so it will be, it will look like this. Okay, so you will adjust the screw. Uh, screw ni, dia akan determine uh, berapa, banyak, berapa banyak pressure diperlukan. Okay, so this side you have uh, contact and no contact. Uh, dia ada panel dekat sini. Uh, kalau kena dekat bawah, yang bawah ni dia akan connected. Uh, kalau, kalau dia kena dekat atas, uh, atas yang akan connected. 
that is we call as a diaphragm type of pressure switch. Okay, so we will use a delo or diaphragm uh, to detect the pressure. Uh, so color pressure pressure normally will enter from port 14. Uh, so any without pressure, uh, you see is connected number to number two. So when you apply pressure, so it will go up and push this bar. Uh, so bar ni dia akan naik atas. Uh, so uh, this will be connected to number four. So how much it can go up, you can adjust by adjusting the screw on top. Okay. okay, then we have also, tadi kita tengok, pressure switcher sensor. So it will detect a particular pressure. Then you have a proximity uh, sensor. Okay, proximity sensor, I think uh, we know. So when something comes nearby, it will detect. Okay, so proximity sensor contain a transistor which conduct and switches or trigger on when something comes near to the sensor. So yani selalunya kita akan gunakan dalam production line. Okay, so when a, a bottle or something come, come to the particular station, uh, proximity sensor will detect. Uh, it will stop. Uh, then uh, it, your conveyor will stop. So, so this is like a, a present sensor. Okay, so there are three types of the proximity sensor. Uh, the tiga jenis. Uh, the first one is inductive, uh, second one is optical, and the third one is capacitive. Uh, so this uh, the mechanism, the mechanism of uh, the trigger. Okay. They normally have three electrical contacts, one contact for supply voltage, one for ground, and one for output signal. So a purpose sensor, even electrical sensor, Yang you beli pun, uh, dia akan ada tiga, tiga, tiga port lah, tiga, tiga contact. Uh, so, satu adalah connected to supply voltage. Uh, so, normally 5 volt ataupun 12 volt. Uh, so, for, uh, for PLC, normally 24 volt ataupun 12 volt. Okay, so that's uh, supply voltage. Then, ground, ground adalah kosong lah. Okay, so whatever that you you're grounding, uh, ground port connect to the ground, and this is the output signal. So output signal, kalau dia on, on or off. Uh, so dia cuma ada kosong ataupun satu. Okay, so it's a binary. Uh, so this is the inductive type. So inductive type, uh, dia dekat bawah ni, dia, dia ada macam ni, symbol ni. Okay, yang lain sama. Okay. Uh, so, yang lain sama. Cuma yang bagian bawah ni akan berubah. Okay. So, this is the physical proximity inductive sensor. Okay. Uh, so, they are the function dia. So, inductive proximity sensor is used to detect metal or good conductors. So, anything that can conduct electricity or uh, can conduct current. Uh, so normally metal lah. Uh, so metal, uh, you will uh, use inductive type of proximity sensor. Uh, so kalau dalam your production line, you nak detect something uh, related dengan metal ataupun uh, anything, any material yang good conductor, so you can use a inductive type of proximity sensor. Uh, so the simulation macam ni lah. Okay, so let's say this is your uh, sensor. Uh, sensor ni, uh, dia macam ni lah. Okay, then you have uh, oscillation 
amplitude uh, then output signal so kita akan tengok uh, short simulation uh, so dia dia akan detect dia akan detect anything that comes nearby uh, so kalau tak ada apa-apa your amplitude will be high uh, so kalau tak ada apa-apa lah dia tak detect apa-apa so your amplitude will be high and your signal uh, you you tengok on the same line lah uh, dekat sini dia off dia tanda connection okay let's say you have a target so target is coming here Okay, target is coming nearby, so meaning uh, something, uh, your your product lah. Okay, so it's coming nearby. Uh, so you can see, as it approach, uh, amplitude akan berkurangan. Uh, so berkurangan. But here, the sensor output is still zero. Ataupun off. Uh, dia ada particular distance yang dia, dia kena approach lah baru dia akan on ok uh, so it's moving moving nearer so moving nearer the amplitude akan jadi lagi kecil uh, but still not active ok lagi near so lagi kecil still not active Uh, then, dia sampai dekat the particular distance yang you set, uh, then your light akan on, jadi green color. Okay, and amplitude become zero. Uh, because it's already achieved uh, the minimum distance. Okay, then your sensor akan on. Okay, sensor akan on. Uh, then, dia bergerak jauh, dia akan off. Uh, so dia, dia akan amplitude akan jadi besar balik ok then lagi jauh dia akan semakin besar amplitude and your switch will be off because it's not achieved the minimum distance uh, then dia akan pergi lagi jauh uh -huh. so until it move from the proximity uh, so that's why uh, when something comes nearby or your target comes nearby it will detect okay so inductive dia detect based on the material uh, kalau dia metal ataupun uh, a good conductor okay so advantage of proximity sensors uh, they are self-contained uh, rugged and extremely reliable okay so self-contained maksudnya So it can can be used easily. Okay, so now uh, no much hassle, uh, and it can be used for a long time. Uh, so by the extremely reliable. Detect based on apa yang detect uh, coming nearby. So if nothing comes nearby, detect can detect. Uh, so normally this is susah nak rosak. Uh, that's why they say rugged. Okay, so extremely reliable. So that's why it's used in production line. So mana-mana pun you boleh tengok proximity sensor. Okay, in your uh, system. Okay, and they have long service life. Okay, so long service life. So if you can use a sensor for 5 to 10 years, so it's a, we consider it as a long service life. Uh, so meaning uh, for 5 to 10 years, you tak boleh tukar. Uh, so it's safe cost. Okay, they have shorter switching time. Okay, switching time maksudnya switching between on and off. Uh, so, they detect dia, they already reach the minimum distance, automatically detect. So, you no need to wait uh, too long. Okay, so it gives a fast response. Okay, number four, they are compact and maintenance free. Okay, compact. So, it's very tiny. Okay, so easy to change. Okay, so tak perlukan maintenance uh, a lot. Okay, unless dia rosak lah. Uh, but since it's rugged and it's uh, reliable, dia susah nak rosak. Uh, so, indirectly, your is maintenance free. So, that's the advantage of the proximity sensor. Okay, so this advantage, okay, like grid switch, they cannot be used in environment subject to magnetic field. Okay, uh, 
So kalau uh, normal production line you can use, but if your environment have a strong magnetic field, uh, dia berdekatan dengan magnet ke ataupun or you have other other things like speaker, speaker di dalam tu ada magnet, uh, or you have other things that uses the magnet like your transformer. Uh, so apa-apa yang gunakan magnetic field, uh, so they cannot be used. This uh, inductive type, inductive type proximity switch, dia akan keluarkan error. Dia akan keluarkan error. So sometimes no product, dia akan detect like other product. Uh, so sometimes uh, other product dia tak detect. So uh, it will become unreliable lah in a magnetic field environment. Okay. So application of proximity sensor, they can be used in various application. Uh, so you can use to sense the end position of linear actuator, like cylinder or semi-rotary actuator. Uh, fully rotary actuator, you can detect. So they can continuous. Uh, tapi, if semi rotary they are the limitation so whenever you have a limitation in the, your actuator uh, you will detect the end position okay, like how we use a distance rule uh, so when it's in the ohm position and the extended position uh, they, are, they are to consider as a end position so they will detect so you can use a proximity sensor so they are used to detect metallic piece on conveyor uh, that is presence or absence of workpiece on conveyor. Uh, so if con in conveyor you have uh, something coming, uh, so uh, inductive is more on the metallic piece, so it can detect. Uh, it can detect and uh, it can stop the conveyor uh, for you to work on the uh, workpiece. If they are used in press to detect the end position. Yeah, like your cylinder extend to press something. Uh, so you fully extend, uh, they can detect the end position. Uh, if you extend the, uh, your proximity sensor is on, uh, so your cylinder can stop. Uh, then after some time, it will move back. Okay, so they are used to monitor drill breakage while drilling. Okay, so uh, you are drilling. Uh, so you take a drill, uh, let's say drilling application, you take a drill. Okay, once you finish drill, uh, so the, your sensor will detect, uh, then your drill will stop. And after some time, it will move back. So you can use that for that. They are also used as feedback device in speed measuring devices. Uh, so something, uh, if your application is measuring the speed, the speed of the movement the upper uh, so since it's fast the okay, proximity sensor they are fast uh, so you can uh, use use to detect lah. Okay. Yeah, the other solar inductive track Inductive type proximity sensor. Ada soalan tak? Okay. okay, now we move to the second type of proximity sensor. Uh, we call it as a capacitive. Okay, so capacitive symbol dia sama. Cuma yang bahagian ke bawah ni yang berubah. Okay, so tadi kita ada tiga jenis proximity sensor. Okay, the first one is inductive. Second is capacitive. Third is optical. Uh, so, kalau you tengok yang tadi, uh, so you tengok. So, simbol yang lain sama, uh, cuma yang bahagian bawah ni yang lain. Okay, so, if the question asks you to draw the particular symbol, so you make sure you know what to draw lah. Okay. So, yang ni pun sama, cuma yang bahagian bawah ni ada kapasitor punya simbol. Okay. So, it look also almost the same. Okay, so, uh, okay, so capacitive proximity sensor, 
uh, dia ada function dia sendiri is used to detect any eye density object so it detect based on the density uh, so if you are detecting something with eye density uh, so you can use a proximity sensor uh, capacity okay so these are the common one in the production most of the things in the production line in the industry are uh, high density object. Okay, so you will see this uh, always. Lah. Okay, so you can see how it function. Uh, so, so these are the three port. Okay, so at the ground, at the 5 volt, at the 24 volt, and this is your output. Okay, so you can see a uh, target is approaching. Uh, so kalau dia kena, uh, so kalau dia tak kena, so this is the detecting range. Okay, so you can see the light, no light. Uh, so if it's out of the detection range, uh, so no detection. Uh, kalau dia masuk ke detection range, uh, so it will on. Lampu hijau. Okay. So the advantage of uh, this type of proximity sensor. They are widely used because they have ability to react with wide range of material. Uh, macam tadi, dia hanya move kepada metal, uh, inductive type. So, capacitive type, you can use for any range, many range of uh, material, as long as they are the density. Uh, so, mostly, bahan yang kita gunakan ada density. Okay, so, mostly, you can detect a wide range of material. They are suitable for detecting non-metallic object. Okay, so tadi uh, only metallic. So capacitive can use for non-metallic. Uh, botol ke. Uh, so production line selalunya ada botol kan. Dia isi ke. Uh, so uh, you can detect anything. Okay. They can be used to sense and monitor level in storage container. Storage container, so you can uh, detect level lah. Uh, so if it, uh, let's say bottle, you now see I it, mineral water, so it's the production line. So it will detect when uh, the water reached the maximum level, then you stop. Uh, okay, so level detection, you can use a capacitive proximity sensor. Okay, so that, that are some of the advantages. So these advantages of the proximity sensors, they are sensitive, especially in humid environment. Apa the humid environment? Siapa tahu? Humid environment. Anyone? A lot of humid moisture. A lot of moisture. Kelembapan tinggi. Okay, so if, uh, so that's why normally sensors, they are the operating range. Uh, so they, they will say, so this particular sensor can operate in this uh, temperature range. Uh, so maybe 25 to 40 degrees Celsius with uh, relative humidity of uh, okay, 20 to 40 percentage uh, relative humidity. Uh, so they can bagi the manufacturer of the sensor uh, or the proximity sensor, they can bagi tahu siap siap. So this particular sensor only can be used in this particular range of humidity because in the humid uh, environment it will be very sensitive. Uh, so color sensitive, uh, they can bagi false signal. So macam saya bagi tahu tadi ada barang dia cakap tak ada barang. Uh, so tak ada barang dia cakap ada barang. So it will cause uh, error in your system. Okay, so then second disadvantage, without the compensator ring, the sensor will be very sensitive to dirt, oil, uh, and other contaminants that might uh, stick to the sensor. Uh, so, yeah, need the normal, because mostly it will be used in various environments. So, if your environment that you are using uh, is having dirt, or oil or other contaminants. So you need to have some kind like a protection. Uh, protection 
of to protect your sensor lah so if you don't have that uh, so your sensor will be like clogged dia akan terhalang uh, so when, kalau terhalang you cannot detect or it will always detect something uh, so i do error okay, so you need to use a uh, protection like this compensator ring so a ring to cover uh, the surface of your sensor okay okay the third type of proximity sensor optical sensor uh, so tengok jangan tanya kenapa simbol dia macam ni simbol dia memang macam ni lah untuk optical Okay, so uh, benda lain, the other other part are the same, just the down part lah. So for optical, it will be like this. Okay, so optical normally it will detect uh, any reflective object. Okay, so if you see the construction, semua nampak lebih kurang sama. Okay, so just the symbols will be uh, different and uh, type of proximity are used to detect any reflective object. So, a proper object yang boleh pantulkan cahaya, so you can detect. Okay, so you can see uh, you have, uh, normally you have a transmitter and receiver. Okay, so your transmitter will transmit a light. Okay, and your receiver will detect. Uh, so, normally it will be like this lah. Uh, and it will have a detecting range. Okay. Uh, so, maksudnya dalam detection, detection range, uh, you will have uh, this uh, light transmitter. Okay. Between transmitter and receiver. And you have a target. So, target at the casini is not on because uh, it's out of the range. So, katakan dia masuk ke dalam range. And your reflective, uh, your your light is blocked. Uh, so, kalau dia block, your light will be on. Okay. Uh, kalau, uh, so either either one of the light rays are blocked, uh, it will be on. Okay, kalau dia uh, out of the range, and uh, no blocking blocking of the light uh, so like uh, lampu ni uh, is yeah ini bukan lampu ya yeah? so this is a invisible uh, invisible light uh, lampu yang uh, we cannot really see lah with our uh, naked eyes okay, so but the receiver can uh, receive okay, so when uh, there's a blockage it will detect it will on Okay, so any questions on the proximity switch? Are the solar there? Yes, oh, sir. Question. Okay, so we move to part D. So this, this will be the last part for today. So read switch. So tadi kita tengok a uh, few slide mentioned about read switch. So what is actually a read switch? So read switch is one of the sensor which is operated by the magnetic field. Okay, so our job as engineer, we need to come up with a solution. Okay, tadi mula-mula detect material. Uh, uh, detect, detect metal. Uh, tapi... Uh, cannot be used in the magnetic field. Uh, the second type, they detect uh, the high density object. Uh, but the other two can uh, So, read switch uh, is uh, invented so that you can use the switch in the magnetic field. Okay, so, to solve the problem of uh, magnetic field interference, uh, so you will engineers come up with a red switch. A red switch can be used in a magnetic field. Okay, usually fit directly uh, onto cylinder with clips. So, you can see, there is a red switch. 
Okay, so selalunya kita kita tanya macam mana uh, in the distance rule detect. Okay, so you letak dua read switch macam ni. Okay, so this is your piston. So you have uh, two read switch and in your cylinder, in your piston, ada magnet. Okay, so ada magnet. So the piston of the cylinder has a magnet built and into it. Uh, so the magnet dalam piston. And when the piston come close to the reach switch, the contact is close. So uh, boleh tengok dekat sini. Uh, so this is out of the position. So there are the reach switch dekat sini. Uh, so if your piston is out of your, out of your reach, uh, lampu tak menyala. But if the sensor, uh, the, the piston is within the range, uh, lampu bernyala. Okay, so switching based on magnetic, magnetic field. Okay, so boleh faham? Ada soalan? Any question so far? Yes, 9.27. Okay, so we have covered uh, A until D. Okay, so E, we have a relay, relay and other processing element. Uh, so that one I will cover in the Add Puzzle video. Okay, and also as internal lecture. So we have around uh, another 30 plus slide, which I will cover. So it's quite important also, uh, all these uh, elements. So you, uh, you can uh, listen to the Ad Puzzle video, okay, which I will upload today. Okay, be prepared for next week. So, so your test one, your, your test, chemitum test will cover until chapter five. Uh, so electronimetic tamasu. So you don't only cover the pneumatic part, chapter 1 to chapter 5. Okay, akan ada design question and also uh, theory. Okay, so calculation, I'm not sure. Uh, so, kalau ada pun yang satu calculation tu je lah. Okay. So, any other question before we finish? Okay, so I think I have covered uh, for today. Okay, so please uh, finish your assignment. Assignment uh, submit next week. Double S Bulan last. Okay, so I think your assignment is will be helpful for you to understand how to answer for your midterm mid uh, exam. So I think uh, that's all from me. Okay, thank you. If no question, we can dismiss early.